Hey everybody, this is Robert Mathis from the Quest for Crew, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you a method to playing jazzy stuff on your pad controller. It involves some preparation because uh, when I was preparing this lesson, I noticed that it was way more convenient to swap a few samples around and to use uh, jazz specific samples, like for example, hits that are played with brushes. So let's do some preparations first, and then let's go play some jazz. So all the sounds you hear come from my beloved Addictive Drums 2 drum library. And to get that nice, mellow, jazzy sound, you'll need to get their jazz brushes kit. Uh, you can also use other drum software, but then you need at least to find uh, some samples that are played with brushes, because otherwise it won't work for this particular way of playing. Okay, so the quickest way to get a sound that resembles mine is to get that Addictive Drums 2 Jazz Brushes Kit, and I'll link to it below. And then uh, you install it, and you boot it up in Addictive Drums, and then you choose the No Room with Comp preset. And afterwards, you go into the drum setting, and you change the brushed ride for a ride that's played with sticks. That's my sound. Okay, so now our kit is 100% ready, but we have to alter our pad layout a little bit to the following layout. Now, let me walk you through it. It's still based on the standard Quest for Groove pad layout, so if you don't know what that is, please check out this video or check out the link in the description below. Uh, but if you do, let me walk you through the changes. So these two pads are both rides now. This is a normal ride, and this is a ride bell. It's good for like variety within jazz playing. And the other two hi-hats are the same. The rest of the pads are also the same, except for this entire row. This entire row has different samples than I use normally. Okay, so this pad over here that I usually use as a side stick is now a hi-hat foot close sample. So this is the sample that uh, you hear when a drummer uses his uh, foot pedal to close the hi-hat. And next to this, these three pads are all snare pads and they're all played with brushes, but they increase in intensity in this way. So this is the lowest intensity snare hit, and this is the highest intensity snare hit. So um, this one is a sample called Closed Soft Tap, and you only get this sample when you have a brushes kit. When you're playing it, you immediately hear that jazzy sound. Okay, next to that is a normal snare open hit, but it's played with brushes. And next to that one is a shallow rim shot. That's the most intense sound. You can do all this jazzy stuff. Okay, now with our kit and pad layout in place, don't forget to save this preset by the way, so you can recall it whenever you want to play jazz. With all that in place, we can do some jazz drumming. Let's start out with our right hand and play a ride on every beat and a hi-hat foot close on the two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now let's bring in our left hand and occasionally give that ride a little extra swing hit like this. And now, for some extra power on the afterbeat, let's also use that soft snare tap pad on the two and the four, together with the close hi-hat pad. And now we can use that left hand again and sometimes tap the right, but sometimes tap the snare pad. Like that. And now let's ditch the right and move the right pattern to the snare. So now we're gonna play every beat on the snare, and we're still gonna do that um, closed ha foot hi-hat on the after beat. It's another type of jazz pattern that you can play. Usually uh, when the band goes all out, you go to the right, and then when you have to take some energy back, you move to that snare thing, and you just do that. All right, let's switch back and forth between that right and that snare pattern for a second. Okay, now let's go back to the first pattern and bring in our left thumb and play some accents on the snare here. Right. 
right? And if you want, you can also play the accents on the kick, but personally, that's possible, that's a jazzy sound, but usually when I'm playing jazzy things like this, as soon as I start dropping bombs with the kick, it's too much. So be a bit modest with the kick drum accents. Finally, let's do a swing pattern on the hi-hat like this. What we're doing now is basically we're playing a hi-hat on the one and the three, one, three, one, and then on the two and the four, we're playing this closed hi-hat, which also closes the open hi-hat, see? And we also hit that soft snare, just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. But then we also play that little swing note in front of every open hi-hat. One, two, three, four, one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one. And again, if we bring in our thumb, we can play some accents. Alright, that's a relatively simple way to play jazz style swing grooves on your pad controller and obviously this video only scratches the surface of what's possible within the jazz genre and I'm already looking forward to some snobby comments below telling me why what I just explained is not jazz and why I have to listen to Charles Mingus and uh, stuff like that. But to tell you the truth, I don't play jazz that often and if I need something that sounds jazzy in one of my productions for example, the stuff I just taught you is all I ever needed to make it work, so it's pretty jazzy. Two final tips. One, when in doubt, play less. You don't have to play accents and variations all the time. And most songs benefit from you being a humble jazz drummer that just hits his ride and doesn't try and do too many fancy things. Usually you're only in the way of all the other soloists and all the other jazz players. Two, a little trick to make your jazz grooves uh, cook. Is that like cooking jazz? Like make the, well, whenever, a little trick to make your jazz grooves groove uh, is to listen to the bass player. Because in jazz, especially when there's a walking bass, the bass player plays on every beat of the bar. Boom, doom, 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 doom. So in a way, the bass player is like a very low pitched metronome. And you can use that to your advantage by really locking in with that metronome. Well, that's it for today. I'm going to jazz out and uh, see you next week for another video. And until then, stay groovy. Bye.